This is uh, Walter Edgar. He is our historian here in South Carolina. I believe he's in studio today. You might see him when we go through radio. He does shows about the history and the culture of South Carolina. When significant events occur, they call on Dr. Edgar to talk about them. Uh, when the shootings at the A&E church occurred, when the Confederate flag was lowered, he was the man who understood the history behind those places and that symbol. So he was the one that the, the TV networks and the radio networks called on to comment on those things. Yeah. Our signal actually flies through the air and goes into your home. Those are those red and white towers you see along the side of the road with the red blinking light at the top. Every one of these circles is one of those. And based on the color on this map, some are TV and radio, some are TV only, and some are radio only. And you see we cover the entire state. All right? We started up in Greenville and very slowly added stations and added transmitters until we covered the entire state. And today we don't run one channel, we run three television channels and two different radio services into your home. You can get these at home. Hi, my name is Jamari Kepstadt with the Lee Central Middle School media team, and I'm here with... I'm Glenn Rawls. Hi, Mr. Glenn. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at ETV? Sure. I'm Director of Communications at ETV, and we're sort of the in-house advertising agency. We do graphics. We do animations. We do uh, promos and trailers, which are the little previews of what's coming up next. It's our job to get people to watch ETV and to listen to South Carolina Public Radio. What motivated you to do this field? I think it was just such fun. I think I started out in theater and I, I think I enjoyed being with an audience and I enjoyed uh, when we had a product that an audience enjoyed and so coming here was just a, a natural extension of that. We have so many shows that people like and they have a good time with from, from Sesame Street from the real little kids to the folks for the grandparents. I mean we have Lawrence Welk and Downton Abbey and all and making it grow and all of those shows. I think it was just great fun to work with an audience and be in front of an audience. Thank you. When you're watching something and the cell phone rings and they answer it, when they're actually on the set, the cell phone did not ring. They answer, they add that ring later because you can't have a live cell phone on the set. All right? There are many special effects that happen that are audio only. You will notice when you edit, the sound of the room will change as you make your cuts. That's because spaces change. They all have their own special sound. And when you're on a set, what happens frequently is the sound man or the person doing sound will stop and say, everyone be quiet, I need to record this for a minute. And they'll stand there with a microphone and no one will make any noise and they'll just record the sound of the room. And later, when you've edited all your pieces back together, they'll take that continuous sound and put it underneath, and that helps balance out the sound of the room. The other thing is you may well know that video dissolves. Do you know what a dissolve is? When one picture ghosts out and the other one appears? What a lot of people don't realize is you can also do that with audio. If you have to cut something and it sounds kind of sharp and it sounds kind of clicky, you can put a little dissolve in the audio, and that will change it as well. And I'm here with... Betsy Newman. And we're at the ETV studio in Columbia, South Carolina. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and what you do? I'm a producer here at South Carolina ETV. I make documentaries mainly. Uh, some of them are for television and some of them are for the web. And I've also done some programs with young people like yourself, bringing them here and teaching them how to use video. So I do a number of different things. What motivated you to um, join the ETV studios? I was living in New York. I lived in New York for a long time, but I'm from South Carolina originally. And I used to come down here every summer 
and teach teachers how to use video in the classroom. And that's actually how I know Mr. Patterson uh, through that uh, connection. And after a while, I decided I'd like to move back to South Carolina. And I was fortunate enough to get a job here at ETV. Thank you. see an actual studio camera and see the size of it and you can see what the camera person sees when they look into it and all of the handles that have to be used and the red is here to tell you which direction the camera is going to move in all right and they move fairly easily and they move up and down I also wanted to show you this camera which is pointed toward you for a reason this is a device you may have heard of. It's called a teleprompter, all right? There is a laptop screen down here, and you can see the script in it, but the script's backward because this piece of glass acts as a mirror, and the camera lens is in the middle of this piece of glass but behind the glass. When you watch a newscast, their script, you ever seen how credits scroll mm -hmm. up the screen at the end of a movie? Mm -hmm. Their script is scrolling up the screen so it's here. And though they're looking directly at you, what you can't see at home is their script is right here. And you'll notice they're holding the script in their hands as well as a backup. <coughs> when you're on the air, you're supposed to keep pace and turn as you go just in case this goes down, and it will but most people don't, and you see that moment when they get lost. That means this turned off for a second, and they start going through their papers like this. But this is a teleprompter. Generally speaking, actors do not use a teleprompter. They memorize their lines. However, on some programs, they do use this to see their lines. Um, you will also see the thing that came before teleprompter called cue cards. Have you ever seen a cue card? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Saturday Night Live still uses cue cards. And these are cards that have the script on them. And everyone has a color. And when you see your color, you read the line. And these are written by hand. And we actually have someone from ETV who used to hold cue cards for Saturday Night Live. And she had to work all week with weights on her wrist so she wouldn't get tired. And then when it was time for the show, she'd take the weights off so she could hold the cards for 90 minutes and not get tired. Okay? Those were cue cards. They still use them some places. But this is a teleprompter. This is how your anchor knows what to say on television. Okay? How long have you been working here at ETV? I've been here 14 years. 14 years, that's a long time. Yes. How has ETV impacted your life? Oh, ETV has been the best place to work. It's just a wonderful privilege to work here and to be able to do what I love to do and get paid to do it and work with a whole bunch of really creative, nice people, too. Thank you. Hello, my name is Aaliyah Johnson. We're here in Columbia, South Carolina at the ETV studio. And I'm here with Mr. Glenn Ross. Hi, Mr. Ross. Hello, how are you? I'm fine. Good. My question for you is, if someone is interested in um, pursuing a career in this profession, what courses would be good for them to take? Well, I think theater and speech. Learning to speak, I think journalism, learning to write, your English courses are very important. And I think looking at the arts, arts composition, how a picture looks, all of those things come together when you do television production.
Would you encourage young students as, you know, the middle schoolers and high schoolers you have here today to come into this field as a profession and career? Absolutely. It is great fun. There's nothing more fun. And I think my, my theater background actually helped a lot because I was in front of an audience. I learned how to talk in front of an audience. I learned how to relate to an audience. And so when I got here, I already knew all of those things. And I'd worked with set designers in theater and light designers in theater. So I knew all of that as well. I, this is so much fun. I mean, I've been here for 35 years. Every day is different. Everything they ask you to do is different. I would absolutely say yes. Well, thank you very much for their interview. Thank you very much, Christina. It's been a pleasure.